great times that I haven't been on a set, I haven't shot in a year since my show's over and do music. And she said, I like, miss it. And yeah. we were like, do you want to do a, a part? Like, we're shooting here tomorrow night. She's like, yeah. So we wrote something. We're like, okay, we have to write something that fits into the movie. Joe Kennedy had a concert, and then she came to the shooting. Yeah, it was awesome. awesome. It literally, we thought she'd show up around 2 in the morning. She finished her concert at 10.30, went from her concert to set. It was so cool with everyone. All Nailed the it. extras were freaking out. Like, she was oh, so sweet to honest, all of yeah. them, took pictures, and she just came in and nailed it. And it was so funny, just you know, striking out in such a horribly cringeworthy, embarrassing way. <laughs> was like, just, it's always good to see Eli hit the 19 year old girl, you know? So. Yeah, it's <laughs> just painful. This poor guy, like, what's he doing? It's so out of his league. And she was great, and she was hilarious, and everyone loved her, and it was just, it was just cool. cool. Really it was cool. really cool. And now my sister wants to see us after Chuck, you know? Yes, now your sister will see it. Yeah, yeah, now your sister. Yeah, my sister will try it. Yeah, make out with Cinco. You like, what, was the, what was the, was there like a challenge with work? I mean, so you're a co-writer, producer, and then acting. How did you manage all of that? And what did, what did you want to bring? Yeah. <laughs> and what did you want to bring to to the character? Because I mean, yeah, well, it was it was a huge challenge. I mean, when we wrote Gringo, I was there with Nicolas. We went down to Santiago and to Valparaiso, and everything was like, oh, Gringo, and look, you know, Nicol Nico's Gringo friend. And so we just wrote him as Gringo. And then it was I was me, and it was me, Ariel, and Eli, and, and Poyo. You know, and Poyo, yeah. And the four of us. And so, and we just, and as we were writing, we thought, like, the, I had such natural chemistry with, the, with Ariel and Poyo. We're all friends, anyways. I thought, well, I'm gonna, we have, we should do this. Like, you, know, you were like, you should play Gringo. Yeah. So we started talking about it, and I thought, if I'm going to do it, I want it to be very different from the Bear Jew, which is such a. I thought it'd be great to go from the most heroic character, <laughs> from like what's better than shooting Hitler, and of course people know that I wrote it and produced it. And I'm what did you say about me. him, uh, Ariel? To it? Oh my God. <laughs> no, I said that for me, performing with Eli Roth was like performing with Moses. He's like a Jewish <laughs> hero. <laughs> <laughs> Jew. You're so is inspiring for every Jewish boy <laughs> all over the world. And how I do mean, you call yourself? You're we can shot Hitler. Yeah, and he's the bird you and you're the teddy bird you. He's the teddy bird you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... They love that. They've been doing it all day. You know the first. So my hyena is out. Two in the morning. Um, uh, no, it's, uh, I wanted to write, first, you know, we wrote the script, we're very, that was a challenge, to write something that you know is going to follow a certain path but subverts expectations, and that's always the fun, is setting an audience up one way and completely flipping it on its head, and we, and we want to set him up like he's going to be the hero, he's our main character, of course he's going to save the day, and he winds up being the biggest <laughs> pussy chicken <laughs> shit, sells up the girls like horrible, and I thought, God, this would be great, because no one will be expecting that I'll give away where the girls are. And just be, but you also understand it because he has a daughter. It's some like survival terror instinct that suddenly everything else gets and blocked out. And in a out. way, it, it also happened because of the box, you know, because when, when the when the news came out that we were making after Chuck and that Eli was playing a part, it was like, oh, Eli's gonna be the hero. He's so the hero. And we're like, fuck this, you know. Yeah, <laughs> he's not gonna be the hero. <laughs> you know? I thought it'd be really fun to play fuck the box, you know. But that's human and vulnerable. But that ultimately. You know, you know, everyone in the way sort of dies because of their weakness. Gringo, you know, because of his daughter. We wanted, you know, Poyo because of his father. Ariel is always texting. Ariel is always texting. Text Everyone's sort of punished, you know, in a very specific so way. So don't text while you're in a movie. Um, you know what would happen. Netflix. But yeah, but it was hard. But I had great producers, you know, Matt Cappuccino, and Miguel Asensio, and Brian Oliver, and everyone. They like Jim Holt, you know, when you have good producers around you, I could actually switch hats. But I was covered head to toe. And Faith, Helen and Cappuccino, Helen also. Cappuccino, yes, both days, and so you know, at the end of the day, I'd have to sit there and like sign contracts and do emails, just completely covered in blood. <laughs> not unusual. It was too many jobs. Though. All right, let's hear it for AfterShock. Hey, yeah, one last thing. Our main cast. This is really important. With a horror movie, more so than any others, especially one with a fresh new cast that is not a cast of major movie stars, but people that we would like to become major movie stars. The first impression is hugely, hugely important. And every single person in this room, you all control the fate of this movie. It is coming out, but the theater owners pay attention, the distributors pay attention. We spent two years on this, working on this movie. Yeah. We put our heart and soul and blood. If you like the movie, I swear to God, if only 10 of you do it, 
to take 30 seconds to write a tweet about the film and tag it like aftershock tweets. I cannot, whatever. I can, no, with Twitter, I cannot tell you the difference. The theater owners and distributors are checking Twitter after screening, and it will help the movie get a bigger release. It will help Nicholas get launched in America. It will help everyone. And if you hated the movie, just please keep your fucking mouth shut until we open it. <laughs>